Hello and welcome to the Change Gang Podcast with me, your host, Laura Ordeal. I'm here to help you hold on to your sanity and your soul as you move through big change. I'm here to guide you from frustration to flow in your life, bridging the practical and the woo just for you. Let's go. Welcome to the Week Change Gang. I have Darren Johnson, certified hypnotherapist, here with me today, and I'm so excited to have him. He's such a great conversationalist. I have enjoyed the conversations that I've had with him, and I'm happy that he's here to share with us all about his journey, about the work that he's doing. And so you actually live in Bulgaria. Is that right, Darren? Yes, although you can probably tell from the accent, I'm not originally from Bulgaria. <laughs> I moved, I've been here almost seven years, seven years since April. Before that, I'm originally from the UK, from a city called Newcastle upon Tyne in the Northeast. And I decided seven years ago that I wanted to quit the rat race and look at something different. So sold my house. And then we bought a really cheap property and moved over here and never looked back, really. And it's been amazing, an absolutely amazing experience. That's so cool. And I love one of the things that's so great that that I love in the work that we do. I don't know about you, but for me, I think you're probably in the same boat as me, is that I do my work online. And so yeah. you can be anywhere in the world that we're getting to have this amazing conversation. I'm in Montana, you're in Bulgaria, and and we get to have that. And I work with a lot I of know. people. I love it. It is. It is. I mean, it's. I decided from the very get go, even if it's locally, that all my schedules, all my consultations and sessions are going to be remote. And the reason being is, is because I want that freedom, so that if I decide to travel or whatever, that I I can have my laptop and I can still work if need be and not have to be tied to a place. My last job, I was tied to a desk for eight hours a day. I vowed that after that, I vowed two things. One, I said, I'm never going to work for anybody ever again. And two, I said, I'm not going to work for anyone ever again. And I'm not going to tie myself to a desk for eight hours a day. So far, so good. I take both of those boxes, which I'm very happy at. That's wonderful. Yeah. And so you just uh recently came into studying and getting certified in hypnotherapy and, and you've experienced it for yourself, the changes that have come along that really kind of brought you into a new understanding and a new way of being after having your own traumatic situations in your life, having PTSD, mm-hmm. having those that have kind of been in play. And we talked a little bit about that. We have another episode with Darren. So if you didn't listen to that, go have a listen to that. And we did dig into some of the things that you had experienced and kind of what came up for you and how that came up. And I think it's so interesting because when we start talking about PTSD and trauma and panic attacks and anxiety and all the things, what I find is so interesting is people are really interested in the labels about mm. here's I have this or I have this or I have ADHD or yeah. I have w- yeah. whatever it is. And people will come to me and they'll say, I have this, I have this. And, and, and I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, you know, but yeah, honestly, it doesn't mean anything to me because I'm not. It sure. really doesn't. I know. I know. And it's like, why? Congratulations. You've been given a label, but it's not necessary. It, and I think it's a real danger with that as well in some ways, because when you tell somebody, oh, you've got PTSD, somebody is, people are going to deal with this in one of two ways. They're going to use that as their protective mechanism. So everything will be a problem because they've got PTSD or they're simply not going to acknowledge that they've got PTSD and they're going to want to move on and, and find an alternative. And I think sometimes it can be really dangerous. I'm sure you'll agree because when when you get in a label that you can, you, it's almost like you're kind of wearing it. That like it becomes a, your identity. That's, that's yeah. That's yeah. That is something that is absolutely what's going on. Absolutely. It can be really inhibiting and I would say and I would questionably argue that anything like PTSD in that, that if somebody debates as it cannot be overcome, I would definitely argue and say I am living proof. I am standing here with living proof and tell you you're wrong. 
and you can overcome this. I agree with you. And one of the things that comes up with that, I get a little passionate and a little up when people say I'm, I'm too far gone to be helped or I'm, I'm too broken to be fixed or healed. And it's not true. It's absolutely not true. And I, I like to use the word cure in the right way, but Mm -hmm. there is a cure for PTSD and all of the Mm -hmm. things that come with it. And the interesting thing is Mm -hmm. that label is a catch all. It's for. It really is a laundry list, a boatload of symptoms mm-hmm. that you mm-hmm. And a lot of times mm-hmm. people don't even realize that the symptoms that they have, some people might say, I just have anxiety or, or I just have this. But when you start talking to them, it's, and how's your sleep and how's this? And, and then you end up yeah. with this list of things. Yes, absolutely. And it's crazy. But all of those things, all of those symptoms under those labels that are happening that you do not like, are things that can be dealt with because they're taking, they're being run by the subconscious mind. Subconscious mind is, of course. I often call it the bus driver. It's the mm-hmm. one that has all of the information. It's doing all the things that's driving, you know, the route that it's been given from the time you were tiny. And it yes. doesn't want to go in another direction. When you say, Hey, let's uh-huh. take a left because you want to make a change. It's going, no, I know my route. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. We're not going to mm-hmm. change. I don't know mm-hmm. what that looks like. Because it's mm-hmm. trying to keep us safe. And I think that people get are surprised that when you start talking to them and, and you say, yeah, let's deal with this is probably from something that happened a long time ago that you're not even aware of. And when you use the word trauma, people go, I, I didn't really have trauma in my life. I didn't have trauma. But when you start mm-hmm. talking to them and they talk about the fact that their parents divorced when they were three years old and, and then they had a difficult time in school and then mm-hmm. at school that they really wanted to get into for college, they were rejected from all of these mm-hmm. things in life. Those are quote mm-hmm. unquote traumas. Of course yeah. they are. I agree. I totally, I totally and utterly agree. Even. Even to the point of where I just want to start looking into, which I think is an important aspect as well, because when we look at the, the hook of anxiety and PTSD and with the, the current climate and the way things are going in regards to businesses and the amount of people who've got this uncertainty at work. So their anxiety at the moment is super high, you know, work related anxiety and um, because they don't know what's happening from one moment to the next. I I am an advocate for TikTok. I go on TikTok daily and TikTok, I am seeing so many videos where people are like, oh, I might be losing my job today. And they, they're smiling about it because they want to put it out there. And then some of them are losing their job. Some of them aren't, but they're actually putting it out there because they they know or they've got some sort of inkling that's telling them and showing all those the signs leading up to that trauma. And I think there was a really good case study where uh, somebody was very argumentative with the company because they didn't give good enough grounds. But you could see the hurt. You could see the hurt and the fight that she had to keep that on. But you know, the company just weren't interested. And again, like, this is why I think work-related anxiety is equally as important. And people don't realize that. People don't realize that this is anxiety. It's not normal for you to feel. If you, so I did a post about this. If you leave work on a Friday, let's say, and you've got Saturday and Sunday off, and you can't stop thinking about dreading Monday, and it gives you such a bad feeling to the point where you don't want to go out, then you, that is a problem. That is a problem because you can't stop thinking about work. You can't stop thinking about that bad experience you're going to have the following week. That's anxiety. That's a form of anxiety. And I think it's really important that things like this are highlighted and that anxiety is now an everyday thing. And I don't think that there's anybody in the world that doesn't suffer from some form of anxiety or some form of some form of trauma, no matter how mild or how severe. There's not a person on the show. Right. And I think the the misconception is that that's just normal. That's oh, that's just how exactly. I'm, how I'm living, and and it's not meant to be that way. And I actually I yeah. had an experience too where I I cried for weeks every morning when I drove to work. I ride and just I would turn the music up really loud and cry louder <laughs> on my way to work 
And I came to this oh epiphany at one point and I went, you know what? This is not right. This is not okay. And I have to do something inside myself to, to change this. Mm-hmm. And I made a decision that nobody else was going to determine my happiness. And what I found was that even if they could determine my day, what I, if I had to wear a uniform, where I had to be that day, what my hours were to work that day, whatever it was at that moment, mm-hmm. they had these outside circumstances, but I had mm-hmm. the inside circumstances and I had to find a way to be okay no matter yes. what was around me mm. yeah and absolutely I the needs to be I wish there were a form of for every school every business every shop every church every place we're in synchronicity to say when you if, if you feel like this this is what it is it's not going to happen, and it, it's so hard, but I think we've come a long way since, uh, even the 80s, where more people would just go, man up, you know? If man up, it's fine. It's not the end of the world, and you can just get on with it. And some people did, but a lot of people didn't. They just put a front on and pretended that they were okay, and, but they weren't. And uh, I think that we have come a long way since then, but we still got a long way to go in respect of this. And there are still people who are might be listening to this podcast saying, hey, you know what, I am actually feeling this and I didn't even realize that it might be this. Yes, anxiety. Mm-hmm. anxiety is a tough thing because it shows up in so many different ways in people. And what's interesting too to me is that our body physically Again, remember here in the moment that the subconscious runs everything. It runs, it's yes. breathing for you, it's doing all the things. And mm-hmm. when you have something going on in your mind, in your subconscious, like a younger version of yourself that experienced a trauma, when you come mm-hmm. in and you think about that younger version is up in your subconscious running things, think mm-hmm. about a cranky teenager that's pissed off and mad and how is that, that gonna, gonna come at you mm-hmm. and go, I'm angry, and so let's mess everything up, which might mean yeah. because it's up there in the control room, and it's mm. you might have the IBS, you might have the anxiety and the panic attacks, you might mm. have the emotional overwhelm. It might be mm. that you have the chronic fatigue or mm. or something else that comes into play because mm-hmm. it's not getting the attention that it needs, and that absolutely can come, that can come yeah. right, like right now where. It happened when you were three years old and you're like, yeah, but I've been dealing with life since I was three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now it's yeah. time to go in and say, okay, do we need to clear this? Do we need to reintegrate this little version of ourselves? What do we need to do to come mm-hmm. to peace and have yeah. those symptoms under mm-hmm. that label disappear? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yes, yes, I, abs- I, I find, I, I completely agree. I mean, I had, um, a client, uh, one of my first clients that I've been working with and I was say under the anxiety tag and hers was severe paranoia. She was so paranoid about things, but she had no reason to be paranoid. But listening back and stemming, it was because of things from past events, which had kind of took their toll and they weren't dealt with. There were, there were traumas that weren't dealt with and they were just like left and hidden and then suddenly it, it surfaced, but it's, it's been surfacing for the last 10 years. And then when you, when you look at these things and start to put them in the place and you explain the, I was explaining to the client, look, the reason being is it's your, your subconscious is trying to protect you from things that happened which aren't going to happen now, but it's thinking, well, maybe it will. And that says, but we need to train the subconscious that it's not a case of what if. What if the sky falls down tomorrow? It may happen, it may not, but we can't leave, live our life like that. We can't live our life based on what it's. We have to just let it be. And she wouldn't do that. She She couldn't literally do that. And to give her that relief, in that confidence to walk forward and say, you know what, whatever's coming, I'll be ready for it, but I'll deal with it when it happens. To, I don't know if this is going to happen or if it's not going to happen. The difference is just amazing. And seeing them, 
I, it never, it, it, because hypnosis is so new to me and watching these things happen, at the moment, I think I get more shocked than what the clients do. Honestly, <laughs> the, the, the clients are like, oh, I feel better. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's, you look amazing. Like, you look fabulous and blah, blah, blah. And I really think I get more shocked than the clients. I get more excited than the clients do. I really do. But I love that. If they can say that that I can see it, then it makes them feel great as well. And that's awesome. And that oh that's the truth. I love that too. I've I've experienced that so many times when it's just like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> really? That's so exciting. And you just feel yeah. such a joy for them. And at the same yeah. time it's, this stuff is magic. It's like magic. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It really is. And, and it was like, it was like, even with the hypnosis, the first time I had hypnotized somebody was in my first session on Jackman hypnosis. And it was a lady. And I always remember we did, uh, you know, magic fingers and uh, we were doing magic fingers, the very first one. And she went under and she did magic fingers. She came out of it. She went, wow. She went down. How long have you been a hypnotist? I went, about five minutes. <laughs> She went, really? She says, because you sound like a natural. She says, I thought you'd be doing it for years. I says, no, I've literally just started. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. That's so fun. And it's so easy. And I love that. I love that hypnosis can change things so amazingly and that people... People have so many misconceptions about it and that mind controlling and we're doing all these things. And honestly, I'm trying to control my own mind. I don't want to control anybody analysis mm. and you can't do something that someone doesn't want to do i mean that's just the truth mm-hmm. of it and i find that, that even in my work that the people who truly are at the point of we have to change this it has to change now my life has to uh-huh. change we have to, they're the people that go in and that change happens yes for the people who are like well I don't, you know, okay, we're going to do this. But honestly, they're thinking they don't need the change somewhere inside of them. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. be as fruitful or as meaningful. And yes. So it is all about their willingness and their desire. It really is. I agree. It really is. It's like if somebody wanted to quit smoking and they went to a hypnotist, but they went with thinking, well, if the hypnotist can make me quit smoking, that's great, but I don't really want to do it, then why bother going? Because if the willingness isn't there for the change, you're fighting a losing battle. There's no point because your subconscious is going to just say, no, you are not quitting smoking because you know fine well you don't want to quit smoking. So until you do, let's just not even bring the subject up. I could never understand why. It's like if somebody, it's same with anxiety or, or whatever. If somebody was like, oh, I'm going to try this hypnotist and see if they'll cure my anxiety, but I'm not optimistic. I, if they came to me like that and said, well, prove to me you can cure my anxiety. And I would be like, well, no, you convinced me. You tell me why you want to cure your anxiety. I, I always like to flip it and give them the option, you tell me why. Make me believe why you want to cure your anxiety. Why now of all kinds? If I had a magic wand, what would change? Blah, blah, blah. And if they can't, I would be honest and say, until you're ready, there's no point. There's no point. And it's really sad, but I think that a lot of people do come to this realization in time, especially with the how much it's how much awareness it's got now they do come come around in time i'm a firm believer in that but yeah i agree completely laura in regards to what you've just said and and that awareness is shifting and changing and i often tell people right unfortunately i am often the last case scenario of someone reaching out they've tried everything they've done everything and now they're just like well let's just go ahead and try this and i wish and i hope Mm -hmm. and that's I do what I do here is it's to get the word out a little more that you know what if you come mm. to us first you it's going to be mm-hmm. a lot quicker easier and exactly I mean like it's uh we, when we were talking on your last podcast about when I had my my therapy with the psychologist we're talking about a yay you know we're talking about a year dealing with that that trauma if I hadn't known about what hypnosis had have done or what it could do 
I'm not saying that necessarily it might have done it instantly, but I still would say that hypnosis would have significantly reduced my need for therapy because it would allow, it would have allowed the unconscious to say, Hey, look, I've been looking after you the best way, but I don't need to do this now. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this alternative. There's going to be a much better coping mechanism for you to be able to deal with this or put it behind you than what I'm doing. I believe that now. But then again, interestingly, I don't know whether I would have done it 16. Maybe not, but the the opportunity wasn't there. Yeah, the opportunity yeah, wasn't that's there. That's true. And, and I say oftentimes, I think there is a place for talk therapy, absolutely, because sometimes you need someone to talk to, literally, to talk things out, to talk things over, to get to get that process. However, the the process of talk therapy does, is not the same as going in mm. and really going to the root at the subconscious level and saying, let's dig this out. And one of the things yeah. I love about you know, therapy, too, is that you don't have to share all of your trauma with me. Mm-hmm. You know, I need to know the specifics of the attack that you had or yeah. the trauma that you had. I don't need to know that because you know that you know absolutely there and your mind knows what it's holding on to, what it's living in in that moment, what's triggering the issue, what's bringing about the symptoms. And so through your mind, I'm just the guide. I'm going to go in and say, hey, I love telling the clients that I love it because the clients will go, wow, thank you. And I'll go, actually, I didn't do anything. You did it. All I did was I do through it. I told the other conscious and said, You've done a great job, but you don't need to do that. So can you find an alternative? I said, that's all I've done, but you did all the work. And they were like, oh, wow, really? And that's all I had to do? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that was all that you had to do, literally. But if it ever did come about because of a different reason, you know, you can always come back and visit us and we'll, we'll work through it again very quickly. And they'll be like, wow, I didn't know that. Thank you so much. Really What's cool. uh? I know that because of your own situation with anxiety, PTSD, things like that, you do tend to work with people. Is that kind of an area that you really want to be diving into? Is yeah. the anxiety, the stress, the panic, those yeah. uh, PTSD? Absolutely. Is that I think I, I think that that's probably where my qualities are best put. I think it's really good because I can relate from a personal experience because there's nothing worse than talking to somebody about something that you're going through who hasn't been through that. They can't really relate. They can't really understand it on a, on an emotional level where me, I can, it's better to try and build that therapeutic alliance and that I can go out there and say, look, I've been where you are. This is where I am now. It took me X amount of years, but with my help, you don't need to wait X amount of years. We can deal with this. You know, we can, we can move forward from this. We can put it behind us and, and let you live the happy, carefree life that you really want. And that's what I want to do. I didn't have that option for 20 years until recently. And I want to be able, I was thinking about this the other day and I thought, is it, is it overly ambitious of me to say, being that it's February, but I would love to be able to say by December that I've helped no, no less than a hundred people to overcome their anxiety. I would Dude. like to actually make that my mission statement. Yeah. Yeah. I would really like to make that my mission statement, say uh, no less than a hundred people to be able to be anxiety free by the end of the year and that that would be awesome that would just that and that's that's not saying it's going to take to the end of the year if you start working with him what he's saying is not to have that many people it's going to take yeah it's going to just like weeks for for that yeah a case of weeks absolutely but i think uh, it's definitely something i was thinking the other day and i thought well yeah this this uh, let's run with this let's run with this Perfect. That's wonderful. That's a great goal. Thank you, Darren, for having that. I think you are going to have definitely probably more than that hundred people because I I, I agree. I'm even shocked by <laughs> I shouldn't be, but I'm even shocked right now when people are coming to me and they're like, Hey, can you help me? And I'm like, Yeah, of course I can. How did you find out about me? <laughs> and it's not just those people. You help people with phobias, with with habits that 
climate change, yeah. with with all of those different things. I just wanted to know yeah. a little bit where you want to focus. But that doesn't mean that if they do want to stop smoking, they do want to lose weight, they do have a phobia mm. of flying or spiders or buttons or what yeah. you know, people is a buttons, mm. whatever that is, that they can come and work with you. Yeah, absolutely. It, it would be my pleasure and nothing that would give me more pleasure to look forward to working with the mom. Definitely. And, and just to give them that sweet, sweet relief and let them be able to live their lives fully. Nothing gives me greater pleasure. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for having this conversation with me, for helping me get the word out about the changes that we can make and with your own personal experience of what that looks uh, like. How it, how it changed things for you and, and now mm. how you're able to do that for people. I think that's amazing. So if you don't mind, uh, of course, it'll be in the show notes, but tell people where they can find you, Darren. So uh, the best ways in which to find me, you can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, which is Darren Johnson Hypnosis. You can also find me on my website, which is Darren Johnson Hypnosis.com. Thank you. Thank you. That's so exciting. Thank, Thank you for having me. I can't wait. You're going to have to come at the end of the year and tell me that yeah. you just got out of the water and I've treated way more than that hundred people. So I know here, I'd be like, I Laura, that, that hundred was a thousand. I'd be like, oh my, wow. You know, never saw it coming, but that hundred was a thousand. That would be awesome. There Definitely. you go. I'm putting that out there for you so that you have to come back and tell <laughs> me about what you learned through that process. Okay. I super look forward to that, definitely. <laughs> right. All right, Change Gang, thanks for being here. I hope that you found something meaningful, useful, and connected with Darren and me, and that you reach out if you need something and ask questions. We're both available if you have any questions to come and chat and ask away. I hope that you go into the week and have a wonderful one and that you meet me same time next week right here. Ciao. I hope today's episode was interesting to you in some way and fun if so hey find someone to share it with maybe they need to hear it too or maybe they'll just enjoy it if you'd like go ahead and grab my tips on supercharging your success it includes a free short meditation to do just that you can find that at bit.ly slash supercharge your success until next time happy days